What's good, ladies and gentlemen, bitches? Welcome back to that channel. We're recording live for the mothership Smack out Smackdown. That's Southampton FIFA 19 career mode. And we're on here. The Celta Vigo career mode has officially started. Episode 1 at least. I mean, the introductory, the introductory episode of the series. Se series! Jesus! But, uh... I've decided I am going to go back and forth with them, at least for now, unless other people want to see it a different way. Maybe, I mean, uh, maybe I upload whatever's doing better more often, I guess. Uh, so, today, Southampton, tomorrow will be Celta Vigo. Maybe on weekends I'll do both if they're doing well enough. We'll just have to wait and see. The Southampton uh, still going here. Like I said, I went, uh, I took a little break um, so I could get ahead. So, Southampton right now is, uh, it's, it's we have plenty of episodes backlogged all the way up till season four uh a few a few matches into a few episodes actually into season four uh and a lot has happened from this point up to that point a lot of signings a lot of interesting stuff has happened uh you're just gonna have to wait and see how that pans out but we've got a brilliant chance early on in the game as sofia buffal was played in from gabby adini and buffal has been a uh, brilliant for us and actually, Buffal is a player of interest because in the Celta Vigo career mode, we have Buffal and Wesley Hoot. Obviously, both players um, in the Southampton career mode up to this point. So, I don't want to have two players in two different career modes. So, uh, I've been told uh, terminating the loans are a good idea in the Celta Vigo career mode. Uh, that seems like that's what you people want to see. But, what I've been thinking is, obviously, we're further into the career mode in the Southampton one. And we have better players than both of them. So I'm thinking what I might just do is let them go in this Southampton career mode. Uh, that's what I'm thinking at least. Both Buffal and who neither of them are first team players anymore. But like Buffal is, is I mean, they both play but no first team players. Right? Whereas in the cell of Vigo 1, at least Wesley Hoot would be a first team player. I mean, you guys saw the defensive options. They ain't great. Uh, so, well, that's what I'm thinking at least. I'm still not 100% decided. I'm still not, still not all there. But we'll see how that one goes. Huddersfield took the lead in this one, and and it was a it was a beautiful strike that actually got them there. We tried to get ourselves back right into it as Bertrand Traore. Ball coming across him, trying to bend it into that near post top corner, but the keeper was alive to it, making a good save. And you see right there. I don't know where the defender was going because the ball was not. I mean, I guess he anticipated. He didn't react, he anticipated, and he, he guessed wrong. He, he guessed wrong. He anticipated wrong. We also got a chance from the resulting corner that went just over the crossbar from Mario Hermoso. I think Hermoso is still looking for his first goal for the team, uh, which is interesting. I thought he'd score more goals from corners. Uh, he's very good in the air. So I'm kind of interested. He got his opportunity right there and sent it over the bar. Still behind in this one. 28 minutes in the game. Lamina finding Gabbiadini. Nice passing in between. Butch Traore into Hoibia. Into Buffal. And that one was a big opportunity. Again, that's two big opportunities for Sofia and Buffal in this game. And neither of them have found the back of the net. And that one uh, even more so wide than the than the first one. Like the first one was closer than that. But Huddersfield trying to come forward again. Nice interception from Klein. Finding the mean up, passes it into Bertrand Traore, finds Gabbiadini and spins off of him. And now Bertrand Traore on brilliant form this season, bearing down on goal. And it finds the back of the net as you would expect. Bertrand Traore has hit the ground running in this season. He has hit the ground sprinting in this season. He has hit the ground. There's no other word. There's, I really don't think there's any other word for sprinting. But uh, you know where it is, Bertrand Traore, as soon as he was played in from Gabby Adini, he was surely going to find her back in the net. And he's had some good link up with Gabby Adini so far in this game. Not only this game, but this this series. Uh, and it was only a matter of time, really, before we got an opportunity to make it make it count. Huddersfield took lead again. And that one is... I don't even know what to say about that one. I don't even know. Like, <laughs> what can I do? <laughs> I mean, we could have, other than stopping the cross from coming in to begin with, like, but doing that, we couldn't do that and mark the player in the box at the same time. And the header was just magnificent. Ariola didn't really have a chance. It absolutely flew into that top corner. Now, after all that work trying to get back in, we find ourselves behind again, but again, 
Gabby Adini and Bertrand Traore linked together. And Bertrand Traore puts it into the back of the net for two. So look at this. First half of the game, all these chances have been coming. 2-2. Two -two. Gabby Adini with another assist. Bertrand Traore with another goal. And we are level again. But drawing is just not enough. We're playing against Huddersfield at home. This is the type of game that we we want to come out on top. Like Huddersfield coming forward again though. Right on the stroke of half time. We're past the two minutes added time. But obviously they're going to get a chance to uh, create another opportunity. And they force another save out of Alphonse Ariola. So right now coming into the second half. We really have to improve our game. Because Huddersfield have come out. They've been on their A game. And they're really pushing us to our limits. So they, well, I wouldn't say to our limits, but they're really pushing us and, and asking the most out of us. And the, the first half still isn't up 48 minutes in. They get a chance to put it into the box. They win the header, and it's pretty much cleared off of the line right there. So, I mean, again, going into the second half, we really need to step it up. We're coming forward now. Second half has begun. Sofia before crossing it all the way to the back post. <coughs> Lucas Vasquez. Forcing the save out of the keeper right there. Brilliant delivery. Look at that whippage from Sofian Bufal. And that's a brilliant save. That is a brilliant save. Now that I'm looking at that from Lossel. Absolutely magnificent. Because it wasn't even straight at him. Like it was going towards that far post. And Lossel got a hand to it. Stopped it from going in. Huddersfield coming forward again. Brilliant defending. Uh, getting it out of back out to uh to to Suarez right there. Could have been 3-2 to towards Huddersfield. And Suarez, even after we got it out, Suarez could have uh, sent that into the top of the net. But right there, uh, nothing else really happened in this game. And we dropped some points in a game where we really shouldn't be dropping points. Uh, player of the month is given to Miguel Almiron as well as Bertrand Traore. Almiron has just been brilliant in this season so far for the beginning. Also training, Vandermeer and Fisher both going up. Training is looking good up to this point. Well, the main story here is we are going to see in action the top scorer in the league. And it's live. <laughs> top scorer. I was just talking about Almiron and Bertrand Traore having brilliant starts this season. And, and Traore especially is being uh, recognized and acknowledged because he is uh, he has something to brag about being the top scorer in the league. Almiron is... Uh, uh, he's up there with, with both. He's up there with top scorers and he's up there with assists. But he's just been brilliant. And uh, we'll take a look at the lineup that I came with because I don't actually remember the lineup, obviously. We'll, we'll take a look and see where we're going if we're going with a 4. I would think I'm going with a 4 2 3 1 for this game. Or are we going for a 4 4 2? I just don't know. Ariola in goal. Hakimi, Orban, Amparu, and Chilwell at left back. So a few mixes right there. Lamina and Dada. It's a 4 2 3 1. Almiron starting in midfield with Yazaba and Vasquez either side and Traore, of course, up front. But the back four is a little switched up. Hakimi starting at right back. And Padu uh, partnering Orban. And Ben Chilwell at left back. So we've taken a few. I, I don't want to say. Uh, I guess taking chances. But again, I don't put a team out unless I feel like they can get the job done. And Padu's been looking good. Hakimi is obviously very good. But Klein usually starting. Especially this early on in Hakimi's career. He's going to have to break through. And earn his uh, starting berth. Uh... Having a chance right here, Bertrand Traore, the two names aforementioned, Bertrand Traore into Almiron and Miguel Almiron finding the back of the net. I don't know. What do we say about that finish? I mean, we could say, it was straight down the middle. He sent the keeper, I guess he gave the keeper the eyes and then put it, put it down the middle because the keeper dived out of the way of it on, on Miguel Almiron's right foot, which is why I think, like, did he mean that or was it kind of a scuffed finish? Doesn't matter at the end of the day because Johnston wasn't able to save it. Miguel Almiron gets himself on the score sheet yet again. And 20 minutes in, we take the lead here at the Hawthorns. Dada intercepts that pass. He's going to play across the Lamina into Bertrand Traore. Beautiful flick, and we're flowing. Miguel Almiron showing that pace. He's got a yards about out to the left side of him. He's going to cross it into the box. So Bertrand Traore comes in sliding. 22 minutes gone, and we have doubled our lead here at the promoted Hawthorns Stadium. Well done from the whole team. Like, everybody with Dada, Lamina, uh, Vasquez, uh, uh, Traore flicked it on to, to, to uh, Miron, who played it out to Yazabal. And that's a very cultured finish from Bertrand Traore right there. Not even in control of his body, but he was able to control the ball. That's just what I call brilliant. Chilwell finds Sergi Dada as we continue. Lamina has space to shoot. It's blocked. Comes back out to Sergi Dada, who's going to let one rip. And after scoring his first goal for the team recently, 
He's looking to try and get himself some more on the score sheet. His first goal was hit beautifully, and that one was hit beautifully too. But uh, despite not being able to see it on the way through, Johnston was able to parry that one out wide for a corner. Don't need to see the corner, though. Nothing came out of it. Beautifully done right there, getting inside Hakimi. It's going to come down at the end on the spin. Shot on the swivel. By the near post, you can't really expect that to be beating uh, uh, Alphonse Areola because he is a very accomplished keeper as he's shown us throughout this series he's just doing a, a brilliant job of keeping shots out but right now we are somewhat open and Pardew's gonna have to come out to cover De La Cruz comes into the box it's headed down by Orb and it's eventually gonna find Solomon Rondon and uh poor defending again I mean we started really well but now it's starting to slip a little bit two goals conceded to Huddersfield both of them pretty poor goals a lot of chances conceded at Huddersfield as well the ball headed down by Orban, and Lamina just let it go past him for whatever reason. Then Orban decided to just take his eye off the ball altogether, had his back turned to the play, and that was we was made to pay for that in the end because the ball came right back to that area where Orban wasn't alive to it, and Solomon Rondon uh, was able to to tuck it away. So unfortunately, there conceding the goal, we're still in the lead, obviously. Trying to get that double two goal lead back as Almiron slides it through to Bertrand Dreyer who has all the space in the world to bear down on goal as well as options. He's going to go for goal and finds the back of the net again after scoring two in the last game. Bertrand Dreyer steps up to score another two in this one and we double our lead once more. 59 minutes on the clock before Bertrand Dreyer steps up and does that. And now we're looking a little bit comfortable again. Uh, hopefully... I don't know what that was, but a slight pass. Hopefully, we can hold on to this one. Brilliant defending right there from Orban coming across to start a whole attack. Miguel Almiron now slides it into Lamino, who's got Bertrand Traore. Brilliantly slid in between the two defenders. And Bertrand Traore once again secures a hat trick in this series. That's like, what, his fifth hat trick? Fourth, maybe. I'm pushing it, but at least fourth, I'd say. Fourth or fifth, maybe even sixth hat trick. In this series for Bertrand Traore, he is really becoming this series Stevan Jovetic. Since then, we ain't, I mean, we had the West Brom where Sturridge scored quite a few goals. Uh, but he was definitely not the Jovetic of the series. And then we had the Burnley uh, series where Adam Milson stepped up for a bit. But he, uh, he was even more so than Sturridge, was definitely not the Jovetic. Scored even less goals than Sturridge. And now, it might be the time for us to have another Jovetic in this series. Uh, I would say it just in terms of goals. In terms of goals scored, Bertrand Traore definitely has the potential. But Jovetic was a legend for so much more than just the goals. It was the types of goals he scored. Left foot, right foot, bangers from outside the box, finesse, in off the crossbar, penalties, free kicks, headers, tap-ins from two yards, driven bottom corner. Bended top corner. Jovetic, uh, if you, again, I, I don't know how many times I have to say this. If you haven't seen my Leicester City FIFA 15 career mode, that is the best career mode you will ever see. Jovetic is the biggest legend you will ever see. There are so many other legends. Fabian Shaw was a beast in that series. It was great. Van Ginkel. That series was, was so amazing to, to be a part of. But this one, going strong. Uh, we, we got similar legends in this one. Lamina is able to win the ball off. And Sasha Fischer coming on off the bench to make his Premier League debut. Finds Jose Rodriguez who hits the post. Could have made it five. Unfortunately not. Could have been the first Premier League assist for Sasha Fischer. But uh, wasn't meant to be. Ball, uh, the, the match ball was being taken home by uh, Bertrand Traore. Once again, how many times have we seen this? I really need to go back and check. And see how many times we have seen this. I don't have the career mode legend set up. But... Next episode, we're going to do that because Bertrand Traore has scored three. No, what? More than three. Four, scored three in this game. He scored five in this episode to this point. So we're going to definitely need to update that career mode legends for the next episode and show it. Like I said, we ain't going to show it for every episode. Uh, we're going to show it every few episodes and when something changes. So when someone overtakes as the top goal scorer, as top assister, uh, highest free paid, we'll show it. But we're coming into an important match right here. It's Champions League football. Two games played and we only have one point to show for it up to this point. Uh, that point was actually against Real Madrid as well. And for a lot of it, it looked like we wasn't going to have a point to show for that. Because Real Madrid took an early two-goal lead against us. And we had to do quite a bit to get that two-goal two deficit uh, overturned. Coming out with this one. In goal. Well, let's look at the subs. Angus Gunn, Hakimi, Hermoso. But lineup: up Areola, 
Klein Orban, Hoot and Bertrand in the back. Romeo Hoybier and Lamina, the Trinity in midfield. Front line of Buffal, Traore and Vasquez. So Buffal getting himself a start on that left wing position. I got a good feeling about Buffal for, for this game, bro. Missed some chances earlier, but I feel like if he gets a chance, maybe he'll take it in this one. I feel I, I don't I don't remember, but Lucas Vasquez starting us off and instantly looking for a brilliant ball towards Buffal. Defender couldn't cut that one out. Plays it inside to Vasquez. Inside to Hoybier. We take the lead with a brilliantly worked goal. Ew! That goal was worked so beautifully. Started by Lucas Vasquez. You saw well, it was started by Triero, but really the original pass that created it all was Lucas Vasquez. It was played back into him, and he found Hoybier, who made a brilliant run in behind the defense. There wasn't nobody tracking him. Don't know why. And Hoybier, a little bit risky, maybe went back where the goalkeeper was coming from, but into the roof of the net. I mean, not really that risky. No, what keeper's going to save that? Run into, running away from the shot and then saving it in the roof of the net. I don't know. you got to be Superman to save that one, but. Right now, I mean, we're moving fluidly. It looks good. Bertrand Traore into Sofian Bufai. He's got players in the box. Who's going to look for it? It comes to Romeo. who falls to Bertrand Traore, who slams it in. Past the goalkeeper. And just 15 minutes into this game, we've doubled our lead. And we're really looking set already for getting our first three points in this Champions League campaign. And look at that. Sixth goal of the episode for Bertrand Traore. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that is the most goals scored in for any player in one episode. I'm going to win and say it. Uh, Bertrand Traore thought about... Let's just uh, look at the talent. Thought about taking a touch and last second readjusted himself. Kept the balance to fire it past the keeper. Like I said, I don't think anyone scores six goals in a single episode. I'm pretty sure that's going to be... The most, unless if there if there ever was a player, it would be Bertrand Traore himself, or maybe Lucas Vasquez. But I do not think Lucas Vasquez scored five. If anything, three or four, uh, six is is just a lot. But again, disappointingly, the Champions League is where our defending has looked the weakest. Uh, disappointingly, Oberlan is able to score a goal, and again, it's pretty poorly defended. Like the two strikers in the box are moving around freely and just not being tracked. And there's really not much you could do about it. I guess if you set them to man marking uh, the, the, the two center backs, uh, they'll track better. But even then, I'm pretty sure I have that set and it's not the case. Uh, ball falls to Bertrand Traore. Almost found the back of the net. He just knows where the goal is. Like, you see him, he had his back to the goal. He just knew where it was, almost found that bottom corner. If that player wasn't there, it would have found the back of the net and uh, we would have had our double goal lead again Bert Traore spins quickly looking for that far post he's too dangerous the man is too dangerous like again back to goal spinning on the dime looking for that far post and almost had it set this man is a fucking menace bro <laughs> he's a menace but Basel coming forward again look at that look at that post. and Amiobi Shola Amiobi absolutely off of the cross. That's about as sweet as you can hear volley. And that was coming high. It was from range, distance. That's like that RVP volley, but uh, but uh, not finding the back of net. Essentially, what I'm saying. I didn't even. I can't even remember. I don't even remember that. We we can see it again. Are you serious? So we're still not gonna get three points. Look at the defending, man. We're just wide open. Nobody's near this guy. I'm asleep, bro. I'm asleep. 89 minutes in. We have ourselves a corner whipped in from Lucas Vasquez. He's heading towards the head of Bertrand Traore. Comes out to Wesley Who. We find, uh, don't know who that is. Sergi Dada finds Nathaniel Klein. Pulls it back. Ah! Lucas Vasquez. First goal of the episode. And he saved it. To pull us back into this game, it's getting hot. Let's, let me turn off my light, cause I don't even. I don't even need it on at this point, bro. That, the, the light I use to record my walkthroughs is so powerful, and I already feel stronger, bro. I feel, I feel more, more powerful. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna. Obviously, I did say this anyway. For what not as a Vigo career mode is here, I'm gonna make these episodes short, so it's probably gonna be three matches. Because these matches, something about these matches, there's just been so much more action recently. So, putting in four uh, four matches per episode, there's just so much more action to call. 
And my voice can't really handle it. Like halfway, not even halfway, like 10 minutes into this video, my whole throat, my mouth, my jaws started being strained. Um, so three, three matches per episode should be good. I mean, you got three matches per episode between two career modes. That's six matches. That's a lot of content to call. But we're into the final match of the episode here now. Ariola the back four of Hakimi Benarek getting a start alongside Hermoso. And Ryan, Captain Bertrand at left back still holding this spot down. We're playing the 4 4 2 in this one. Vasquez, Valverde, Dara, and Ayazabal. And then Gabi Adini uh, up front alongside Birch Trier. I'm actually realizing why it's so long. It's because I didn't speed up the, the, the match intros. But it's too late now! Fulham's lineup. A lot of the players for the Fulham team don't have their scam phase, which I find weird because some of the players do. Some of them do. And some of them don't. Like players like uh, Kenny have their updated faces, but then players like Sessignon don't. And I find that weird, like I have no idea why, but Gabi Adini is still looking to get himself on the score sheet this season. It's been a slow start to the campaign for Monolo Gabi Adini. was almost on the, cam on the score sheet with a brilliantly bent effort just wide of that post, the Italian. Close, no cigar, we're still having faith in him. Gabi Adini has been doing well uh, in, in all aspects other than scoring really so far this season as he finds Dada who finds a Yazabal smashes it across the face of the box and guess who is there to turn it in you ain't even got a guess because he's on the screen but you know what obvious Birch and Triore look at that ball from Iyazabal though man I'm happy with how Iyazabal has been performing so far this season but look I mean just Birch and Triore is just there he's just there to turn it in all the damn time 13 goals in the Premier League this season and this is what the fourth episode of season three. Uh, so th th he's played what? Eight games maybe in the Premier League? He scored like three in the Champions League already up to this point. This man is on absolute fire. Like he is in flames right now in this series. Absolutely can't be stopped. Fulham 1-0 down. We've scored another early goal already. Trying to get himself back into it. And I think that one took a deflection. But Jesus Christ. Christ, what a shot. Gee, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't remember that happening. It, I love, I really love recording this so far in advance because it really hits me like I was not ready for that. Did that take a deflection? I think it took a deflection off of Hermoso. We'll see. Okay, yeah, this angle will tell us all. Yeah, I don't think it did. I don't know. I don't think it did, but that one's it's really, I think it took a real slight deflection, if anything. I'm going to go out and say it didn't. What a strike. We're giving all the credit to Mr. Ruiz right there, scoring his third goal. But my striker has 13. He's not their striker. He's there. Actually, he is their striker. He was leading the line, right there playing a 4-3-3. A Yazabado, brilliantly worked between him and Hesse. Nice little interchange. And uh, unfortunately, it was a brilliant save to deny Mikhail Yaz. He's been denied by some brilliant saves so far this season. He would ha he could have like four more goals to his name this season if it wasn't for some brilliant saves that have stopped his shots from finding the back of the net. Right now, have to take the resulting corner. Who's going to take it? Probably Vasquez. I don't actually know. Someone's coming short for it. Lucas Vasquez playing into Hess. Brilliantly left between the legs. And oh. Hesse Rodriguez shot. Did that one take a deflection or did I just put too much power in that? I'm, I'm a genius. Did you see that big brain move? Calling for the pass short and then just letting it go through my legs and all the space opened up right there. Brilliantly worked right there. But Van der Meer off the bench. Letting the ball go straight. Getting it intercepted. Danny Welbeck on the right hand side. Crossing it into the box. Headed down. It falls. Shot deflected. Mitrovic it falls to Welbeck. And his shot straight into the hands. That was a pinball experience right there. Fulham are really trying to come at us and get something. Are we going to lose our first game of the season? Mitrovic denied by Alphonse Ariola, And we could barely get a ball clear at this point. But now we do. A Yazabal has the ball. Has an option. Look at Vasquez. Look at Vasquez. Finds Lucas Vasquez. Has Bertrand. Look at Bertrand. Tri okay, not looking at Bertrand try right now. Lucas Vasquez. Finds Jesse Rodriguez. Finds a Yazabal. Through a goal! Yazabal's taken down. How many times this season have we been denied by chances just like that? And I'm pretty sure it's the Yazabal most times as well. He's just got unfortunate. That's a penalty. How many times have we had been denied clear penalties so far this season? And I brought it up each time this happens so you guys can go back and look at you see it. 
Like clearly taken that. Uh oh. Woo! Kenny, that who was that? Oh, okay. So at this point, at this point in the series, I'm guessing the update hadn't happened when I recorded this, because Kenny definitely has his scanned face in my series. But uh, we did drop some more points. It's uh, I mean we're still looking good, but bad news right there. Broken toe for Gabby Adini, two months out. We're still looking good, but dropping a few more points than we had throughout the first set of games. But this is where you generally take a look at the table when you think, how are things going to pan out? Ten games played each for all teams, and we're still top of the league right here. Spurs are third, Chelsea second, but we're only one point top. Uh, eight games won, two games drawn, and still undefeated 10 games in. So I'm not going to sit here and complain. I'm happy with how things are looking. Uh, this is where we're going to wrap up the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it up to this point. Tonight, I'm going to record the first episode of Celta Vigo. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and see. I've been waiting to see if I could get the squads to actually update this time. And if they do, I'll re -up uh, restart the career mode because we really haven't done anything other than like take a look at the teams. And obviously, our objectives will be different. And then I'll uh, do uh, future star. But I'll try and see if that happens. And then I'll put into plan some of the things that you guys have told me. And we'll get that series off and running in Spain to go alongside this one. So I hope you guys enjoyed this 26 minutes. I really got to start doing free matches. Episode. Peace.